Hi, I'm Jason Stanfield. I'm a lecturer here in the Cranert School of Management, and my primary job here is to teach tax accounting courses. So what I wanted to do here now was just to talk to you a little bit uh, about a few things you can do to help with your tax bill before the year wraps up. So I've got five things I want you to think about as you're wrapping up your year and maybe some opportunities to save on your taxes. The first is to make charitable contributions. Your charitable contributions are generally deductible as an itemized deduction uh, on your Schedule A. Charitable contributions are deductible in the year that they're actually paid, not the year that you make the commitment. So making a commitment to give a donation in 2015 is not going to help your 2014 taxes. Second thing I want to bring up is to think about your retirement accounts. Now not just a 401k or something else you might have at work. Most of the time those are done as a schedule by the week or by the month withdrawal from your paychecks to go into the 401k. So it might be a little late to make a big change there. But what you might be eligible to do is to set up an IRA. Now I'm not talking about one of those fancy Roth IRAs, which in a lot of cases are preferable for taxpayers. But in this situation, if your goal is to minimize this year's tax bill, the best thing you can do is look into a traditional or a conventional IRA because depending on some income limitations, you might be able to deduct every dollar that you put into that. Another thought, third one I want to give you is to think about education expenses that you plan on incurring next year. Specifically, I'm talking about some of these education tax credits that allow you to claim a credit on this year's taxes against expenses for next year. Now, how do you do this? Well, if you've got tuition expenses for a period in time that's going to start within three months of the end of this tax year, if you can, pay it in 2014. You'll accelerate recognition of that credit back to 2014 when it was paid. Next one I want to talk about is a broad strategy about managing your investments. If you've got some investments that have losses, that is, you've paid more for these things than they're currently worth. That's the normal situation that gives rise to a loss. Because when you sold it, you would have had more invested than what you got back. If you've got some assets like that that you're already planning to get rid of, right? You're not going to hold those for the long haul then you could go ahead and sell those in 2014 and use those losses against any gains you had on investments in 2015. Now the kinds of losses and gains I'm talking about are capital gains and losses. So we're talking about gains and losses on stocks and bonds and some other kinds of investments. But if you know you've got some big gains in your income this year, then going ahead and getting some losses accomplished in December that you were planning on selling anyway might be a great strategy for you. Itemized deductions for most individuals are deducted in the year that they're paid because we're cash basis taxpayers. Well, what that means is if you pay more cash this year, then you'll have more deduction this year. So if you're planning on having a big dental procedure, eye procedure, right, medical procedures that aren't really elective, they are medically necessary, but you can control the scheduling, well, you might want to think about wanting to bunch those into the same year. Most taxpayers are subject to a strict limitation that says you can't take a deduction for your medical expenses until they exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income, your AGI. Well, if you've got 4% of your expenses this year and 7% next year, you won't get any deduction in either year. But if you combined those two numbers, yeah, if you pulled those two numbers together into the same year, yeah, now you'd be over the 10% limit potentially.